Bingo. Live, live. Are we live? Should be live. Okay. Before anybody even shows up, I want to try something new. If you if you've seen the last couple live streams, I think now we have three or four live streams that have timestamps. And a big thanks to Mark M. How's it going, everybody? Hey. So I'm gonna try something this morning. If I I think if I type marker in the chat, it's supposed to make it didn't look like it did anything, but it's supposed to make some sort of a timestamp. But maybe it does, maybe it doesn't. I don't know how to see it. Hey everybody, how's it going? Belgium, too late. We're here to stay. Nice. <laughs> Hello, everybody. All right. You guys are fantastic. How's everybody doing today? It's a nice early Sunday morning. I didn't think I'd be able to do it today. I was supposed to be working, but um, fortunately for me, another guy wanted to work and I didn't. So he took my spot. And so here we are. So got your LEDs with six buttons running with Tasmoda. Fantastic. Wow. How'd you work that out? Mark, tell us about that. South Africa. Hey, Clinton. How's it going? I wonder what if I do marker... I don't know where this is going to show up, I guess. Marker test. I don't know. That doesn't seem to be doing anything. Hmm. Anyways, big thanks to Mark M, guys. If you give him a high five when you see him on the street, because Mark M spent a couple, several hours this week going back through live streams and, and putting um, timestamps on them. And I know Alian, I think, has done that for me before as well. Um, and that's a big help, big help, big appreciation to those guys for for doing that so can't join right now but early in the evening two things to tell you okay bring it wk what's up oh hey five pie how's how you get your things worked out you asked me a question on discord i'm not i don't remember if i answered you or not india Working on some pool automation projects. Wow, I'd love to see how you would do it. Okay, what are you doing, Duke? Tell us about what you're trying to do. One, moved from a template sensor to a min-max component for the average temperature. Oh, okay, good. Min-max min -max works well. Min-max is easy. Just averages it out. I think there's a few other things you can do statistically with the min-max also. But they're pretty, it's, it's pretty easy. And I'm glad you found it and it's working for you. Min max sensor home assistant hello hey hey christopher what's up brother man great group already you guys are fantastic um let's let's switch the scene here because i want to see my monitor over here for a second this was the min max sensor i used this one on my temperature stuff it's pretty nice. I, I wanted to see, because there are a couple of things you can do. Min, max, last, or mean. So you can do a few things with it. Uh, you can get the, you know, what's the minimum been over the time? What's maximum been over the time? What was the most recent one? And then what I've been using is just the mean, you know, the average temperature. So those are nice. If I just shows in the chat as these marker test. Hmm. I think it's I think it's a Twitch thing. I think it's supposed to work in Twitch, um, so it's not working in not working in Home Assistant. But anyways, keep trying. We'll we'll keep trying. If you guys can think of anything else, <laughs> it's cold. So we have a log on the fire in the living room. So now I'll be able to test the idea of the living room getting very hot. Hopefully, the other two sensors will bring the average temperature down. Oh, good. All right, it's a great great test. All right, so a couple things I wanted to talk about first because they were just the things that are on my mind. I had um, in the last, let's do the desk camera. What is that thing pointing at? Oh, it's pointing at my phone. Um, what I wanted to tell you was in the, in the video with the, um, the tri switch, <laughs> I talked about being able to put the, um, the three, the three switch T1 on a, in a two gang box and I think it'll fit obviously the one I used the ones I've done so far in my house have all been three gang boxes so it fits on this two gang faceplate but I it's going to be really close I, the the 
the inside dimensions of a two gang box are supposed to be four inches. And this looks like it's just over, you know, if this is, this is the marker for zero. Oh, actually let's see. That's the marker for zero. Can you see the marks? That's the mark for zero. And then this is the mark for four inches. So it's going to be like kind of hanging over. And I was looking at the plate thinking, can we shave some of the end of it off? And we probably could, but anyways, I've got one situation in the house where I'm going to try it. Um, and I'll, I'll have to give you the update later and let you know if it worked out or not. So, but anyways, I think so. I, in correcting mistakes, I may have misspoke when I said it'll fit in a two gang box, but we'll see if anybody has tried it. Let me know. Um, man, we got Holland, Denmark. How's it going, Mark? The UK. Sorry, can't watch now. Watch later. All right, Peter. Thanks for coming by just to say hi for a second. Running a three phase pool pump motor with VFD with phase conversion. Want to integrate that with home assistant so I can change speeds automatically. Wow. Detect the outside temps. When it's get too cold, circulate the pump. Oh, woo. Open for other ideas. Man, dude, I, you know, so I I haven't messed with anything, you know, VFD, three-phase controller stuff. Trim the edges of the gang box to recess the board. Oh, that's a great idea, curmudgeon. That's that's a simple solution. Thank you. That's a good idea. Yeah, that would be easier than trimming this, right, than trimming this board. Stall the stream. Oh, no, offline. He's back. Eh, sorry. It happens. Seems to happen every time. Okay, question for anybody with Tasmoda. Could you add a 433 MHz RXTX and a D1 Mini to create a DIY Sonoff RF bridge? Yeah, should be able to. Yeah, totally. In fact, you can even add IR. If you go to Tasmoda, um, if you go to Tasmoda and you look at the commands, oops, let's do it this way. And you look at the commands, there's actually um, IR commands too. So there are commands here. So you can use, so if you got, uh, and I think somebody was working on this. Who was working on this? Christopher, was that you? <laughs> um, so what we got here is the ability to um, put a, an IR transmitter and an IR receiver on something like a D1 Mini or Node MCU, run Tasmoda, and be able to use uh, IR codes to send and receive IR codes. So yeah, you should be able to do the same thing with RF. Uh, what's this thing say here? Enable hexadecimal signal receive representation. I'm not sure what that is. Oh, it's for some reason it doesn't want to give me RF, RF bridge. Yeah, you'd have to sort through this a little bit, but, and I don't know, you know, what pin you'd have to connect your um, receiver to. Dropped again? Okay, it's time to do priority. I don't know what else is going on. We're going to put this on uh, priority for this computer again. I don't know what's our what our problem is here. Advanced network... Let's see, that's not it. Priority device. Find the desktop here. There's 80 devices now. It's growing fast. Okay. Prioritized for one hour. Okay. Hopefully that does something. Uh, okay. How can I flash Tasmoda on a TYW1S? I have no idea. I'm not sure. So, uh, Erosion, that's a cool name. Um, so that's a different kind of Wi-Fi chip. Is that true? I'm, I have no idea if that would work or not. I know Tasmoda is really built for the 8266 and there's a port for the 80 for the ESP32, but I don't know about anything else. Built your whole house and home assistant, mostly for my videos. Oh boy. Well, I hope it's all working okay. I always get nervous. I always get nervous that uh, it's not always going to work. Is the version of Tasmoda 6.1 safe to use? Yeah, Charlie. I'm, hey, how's Reynosa? Yeah, I'm using... Um, I'm using 6.1 or 6.2.1 or whatever it is now. And yeah, it's working great. I haven't had any problems with it. The, the new 
you know, what I talked about in that, um, video where you have, um, I keep pointing at that thing, but it's not shown on the screen. The, um, touch buttons, you know, the button topic. So what they separated out, it looked to me like what they did was separate out. This is a good time for a marker. So we can talk about 6.2.1 marker. I don't know if this is going to work, Button topic. Okay. We'll see. So I don't know what version, honestly, that it showed up, but for sure in 6.2.1 of Tasmoda, um, the, what they've done, it seems is they've made it so that the onboard buttons don't listen by default on the topic that you set in the MQTT settings page. So if you go here, I finally got a, I set up a node MCU that's going to just stay connected and be on Tasmoda. So I can always just go in and look at it. Uh, so if you go to configure MQTT, so I've got this topic is node MCU. Um, but in the console, uh, I don't have buttons on this one, but if you go to the console here, if you were to press the button, uh, on, on the node MCU, there isn't one, but if you were to press it, it, it would show up instead of being, um, this topic in the middle here being node MCU, it would be sewn off. It would say sewn off if you pressed the onboard button. And so that, that, that's good because it, uh, you know, the onboard button, if you had never used it before, the onboard button on, on a Sonoff or G, essentially GPIO zero ha, has special, um, functions in Tasmoda. And if you press it, like you press it multiple times, it'll do different things, including put it into AP mode, reset the config, stuff like that. So in order to avoid people accidentally enabling or in, in accidentally activating any of those extra functions on GPIO zero that the, that the onboard button usually does, um, it, what they did was they made it so that that, um, button doesn't, so you don't use that button for switches and such by default, I guess. But if you just do the one point, if you do the, um, that, uh, button topic, if you do want to use the onboard buttons, like on the touch, like if you were using a Sonoff basic or something, or SV even, um, or dual or any of the others, probably, if you don't push, if you're not pushing GPIO zero for anything, then it probably won't make a difference. But if you want to use, um, if you want to use the onboard button as an activator for the relay, then you need to do button topic, turn button topic on or put, turn button topic to one, which will then you, then that would put your correct topic in the middle here instead of sewn off and then pushing the button. So that's what you saw in that video. Um, hopefully that, that was helpful to you. Still has MQT says blocking issues in that library. Oh, you guys are talking about something else. Good. Um, <laughs> pain in the butt to get loaded when I left it unplugged overnight it magically started working the next morning go figure hey curmudgeon what are you going to do that's the nature of the beast sometimes little gremlins live in these things and if they uh, they just feel like they're not going to play today then they're not going to play today and you're just out of luck <laughs> uh, do I have more than one sewn off bridge in, I, in my house I found the range is not that great oh really I only have one uh, well I, ha I own like three but I only am using one and, um, uh, my range has been okay. Um, the bridge is here in my desk, right, right next to me. And most, probably the longest distance that I have it traveling is into the garage, um, to the shop door and the motion sensor. And that's probably, let's see, it's going to be that into the house and down a floor. I don't know. Maybe it's not a huge distance. It might be 50 feet. 75 feet. Stop. Do it live. Make YouTube videos. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Abby. So I can do this because this is easy and quick for me, right? I can do, I can do a live stream and it's, and it's easy and, um, we can get a lot of information done and we get something posted. And, and so there's some information, some new information making the videos. I'm doing good. Um, but they do take a, they do take a long time. So if I didn't do this, I think there would be a lot longer stretches in between, you know, anything that, uh, I posted, but I appreciate, I appreciate that you want the, the videos and I'm, and I'm working hard on them so I can give you the rundown right now as it stands. My next video, Hey, from Portugal, my next video that's going to be out is going to be, um, the, uh, the bathroom one. Is that right? Yeah. The bathroom one. So the one with the, uh, the lock 
and the air freshener and the toilet seat lid. Um, that one is about half edited. So I should be able to get that one done, hopefully even tomorrow, maybe to rest of today or tomorrow. Um, and then I'm also, what I tried doing was working on multiples at the same time. So I, I'm also doing the alarm system one and my alarm system's working. The script is written. I've got most of the footage that I need, I think. Um, but I do need to do a little more filming on that to get it really ready, but then that'll be the next one. And then I got, you know, several others that are going to be close. I do have the, um, have you guys been messing at all with the, um, oh, I'll tell you this and then I'll go on. Well, let's look, let's look at this. So, so I'd love it if you checked out the link really stumped. Let me see. Did you post the link? I don't see it. Arizion, I don't, I don't see it. Send it the link again. Send it in Discord if you have it. What's the status of the bug? So the bug is in the garage, and uh, I have a, a really cool. Oh, where is it? My new. My new favorite book for light reading is DIY lithium batteries. So. I've decided that the best way for me to save some money on the, um, on the bug conversion is to, um, build my own batteries. So I'm not getting, you know, not the individual cells. Um, I'm going to buy the cells and then put them together. Do kind of like Jay who does. I don't know if I'll use his exact, uh, PCBs or anything like that, but that's, so I've been, I've been reading this when I've got, um, time and it's it's super interesting super useful stuff so the bug's good i'm i, I decided if you want to hear the, the the plan i decided the um the outside of it i don't know if i said this before but i want it to be like a b17 and i've I had um my grandpa was a navigator on a b17 in um, world war ii and and so i'm kind of and, you know, I, I really think they're cool. I think it's super cool. So I've been looking at them and I was going to paint it green. And then I decided, no, I think I'll paint it silver uh, or, or get it done in a wrap or something so that it's silver. So it'll, it's almost like the whole thing will be chrome um, looking. So that should be pretty fun. Um, but that's it. I'm trying to get trying to knock out a couple of these home assistant uh, things that I've had on the books that need to get done for a long time. And then um, hopefully really soon I can focus more on the bug, but it's good. It's good. I mean, it's awesome. The live stream takes a lot of energy. The videos are really great. And I learned Israel, by the way, love what you do. Thanks, Abby. I appreciate it. I love doing the videos. Um, if I could do, I like doing the live streams too, but if I could do, um, all videos all the time, I certainly would. Uh, if I could, you know, not work and just do it. Oh, there's the link. I see. Dimmer switch. Ooh. Okay. Let's look at this. Uh, I'll post it for everybody to look at. TAS mode issues. Okay. Oh, it's closed. Why is it closed? Let's see if anybody has any ideas on this. Has anyone had any success with this? What do they say? Dimmer is not supported 21 days ago. Oh, they closed the issue. So I wonder, so I didn't see um, DigiBlur here. I didn't see Travis yet, but Travis found a way to, yeah, to do something like this. This was, was this Travis's work even? Hmm. Well, that'll be an interesting one to try. So we'll see. Travis, hopefully will go back and watch this if he hasn't seen it. Um, we'll do a marker. Marker, new dimmer to try. I don't know. We'll see if it works. Oh, there he is. Just popped in. Okay. Hey, cool. Hey, would you check out that link, Travis, and see if, um, the one I just posted up above a little bit and see if, um, if you think that dimmer's got any, um, hope of becoming tasmatized and working, that'd be cool. Just another option for a, for a dimmer for those that want it. Um, from Austria would like to implement your own smart heating using some linear actuators and a Sonoff 4 channel. Uh, still investigating on a solution for the temperature and humidity sensors. Any suggestions? Yeah, temperature and humidity sensors are pretty simple. Um, you can use that. The ones I've been using are the DHT22s or AM2302s. I think the difference is whether or not it's attached to a circuit board or wires or something like that. But um, AM2302 
So these, uh, these are pretty good. Um, let's see which are the ones that I've been buying. These are the ones I've been buying. Yep. See, I just bought some just the other day, October 3rd. So these have been working pretty well. And, um, you can put these on it pretty much any pin. So if you're using a four channel Sonoff and you do Tasmoda, when you're done, once you've flashed it, you, you don't have a lot of pins on the, on the four channel that are available, but you do have RX and TX and you can put this temperature sensor on the RX pin. So after you flashed, you can do RX, uh, you know, put this on the RX pin and that'll give you temperature and humidity. The BME 280 for temperature and humidity and pressure. Oh, that's cool. I, don't, I don't bet Amazon doesn't sell those, but let's see. BME. Oh yeah, they do. Hot diggity. Oh really? Oh my goodness. Oh, it's a it's a it's a I two I two C. I need to work on using those. What pin do you use those on, curmudgeon? What, what do you use those? These look cool. That would be great. Wow. That's it, huh? Huh. Well, that's cool. Okay, well, curmudgeon, I know what I'm buying next. You have to have two pins. I wrote maker, not marker. <laughs> Thanks, Chris. Sorry, marker. What was I marking? New dimmer, huh? <laughs> you know, what we did find also was that, um, I don't know how long it takes, but YouTube does go back and transcribe like this whole live stream. So like every sentence is is transcribed um that's cool so you it, it you could go through and search and see you know what top if you're looking for a specific topic you could go look through and see if there was any time where we said those where i said those words and i think it actually even does something with the chat or the, the chat is preserved right so you can you can search through the chat hopefully as well uh, i need to get wi-fi to the basement three stories down to get internet to the pie wired isn't really an option because the house isn't wired for ethernet tips you haven't able to access it locally so yeah um Arizion, the thing to do is probably to get a mesh so um most everybody does some kind of i don't unfortunately but most everybody does some kind of ubiquity um i'm gonna check out what chris has here i'll check out that temperature sensor here in just a second chris so um ubiquity routers hey gary um but what i use is the google wi-fi ones so we can go to ubiquity here which are the good ubiquities guys you um what would you guys recommend that use them uh what's the cheapest option can't spend thousand dollars yeah so when i bought so the the google the, the google wi-fi is the ones that i have and if you watch for a deal, like, I don't remember. I don't think I paid that much. I think I paid less. I think I got them when there was some sort of a sale. But anyways, what this does, this is exactly what I have. And it's it's essentially three. One of them is a main and then the other two are sort of mesh. So I have a basement also. I have one of them in the basement in like the worst possible place uh, for Wi-Fi signal. But it's also um, a place that I need Wi-Fi signal. So I have one of them down there. I have one of them up here in my office and then I have one on the first floor um, and it and it covers pretty well. So I think if you did something like this, uh, that would work pretty good. But otherwise, what you want is these ubiquities that I don't know where. The, just check the chat. The, the, there's, they're going to give you some pointers here. APAC light access points. Let's see what that looks like. I think if I would have, um, no, no, did I did I spell something wrong? What, uh, AP dash AC. Oh, I spelled it wrong. I spelled light wrong. <laughs> no, not LR either. This is it. Long range. Okay. So there's others like this though that are light. This, is this a good suggestion, guys? Here's the light. 600 bucks. That's a big pack, though.
So this guy, there you go. So maybe something like that in your basement. I, if I would have, if I would have asked more people before I bought my Google Wi-Fi system, I would have done something like this, like an ubiquity system. Um, but somebody, oh, I think it was Rob on the hookup had, he, he'd talked about how much he um, liked his Wi-Fi router. So I went with those and I'm happy with them. They're great. They work fine. I'm not having any problems. So yeah, open mesh access points. So there you go. Lots of, you got tons, just man, Erzion, you got tons of, uh, tons of suggestions here in the chat. So fantastic. That's what's great about all these guys, man. So much good information. So willing to help. Um, full ubiquity setup at home. And I swear it's the best purchase ever. See, I hear that from everybody. I hear that from everybody. That was Nick, Nick Jedi. I think that's how it says. That's awesome. It's a good name. Yeah. I, I hear that from everybody. You know, spend the money, get an ubiquity system, and you will never regret it. It's what everybody's been telling me. So, unfortunately, it was right after I bought these Google ones. So, don't think that ubiquity is wireless, though. Oh, this one's wired. You have to have a wired connection to this. How does that? So, you, what you need, what he needs, is something that's gonna attach through Wi-Fi and then increase his signal in the basement, right? Word of warning, Ubiquity is enterprise-grade gear. It does take more work to set up properly. Probably not an issue for people here. Yeah, I think you're right, Mark. So you're not going to get plug-and-play as easily with these because they're going to they're gonna give you access to a lot of settings because they're, you know, they're expecting uh, the people that are using it to be, you know, professionals or people that are installing it in a, in a, you know, business kind of a situation. Enterprise. Starship Enterprise. How you, how's the volume? You guys, am I, you hearing okay? I feel like the mic's far away from me today. Ubiquity devices are the best. Marker for Ubiquity. The cloud key setup. Oh. All right, I'm going to go back and see if there was any other questions. I want to make sure I'm not ignoring anybody who had good questions that they need help with. Use a Wi-Fi router supporting open. Yep, this is all good talk. Man, this is good stuff. New Egg has a three pack of 30 megabytes of access points for 169. Holy cow. I'm gonna check that out. New Egg. Ubiquity. Mm, let's just go to New Egg. This is ridiculous. New egg. Sometimes I try and make these searches way more complicated than they really need to be. Ubiquity. Ubiquity wireless AP. Keep your home connected. These are interesting. Shoot me the link. Shoot me the link. Who had the link? Was it Mark? Oh, it was Paul. Shoot me a link, Paul. If you got it, just make it easy. I haven't bought anything from Newegg in a long time. Used to buy stuff there all the time. Regarding running a Docker set for home assistant, then adding another container for the unified controller is very simple. Quick question. Got a couple sold off basics. Was able to flash one using Arduino IDE. And at a certain point, I did see it in my network, but that only lasted a couple minutes. Now it keeps blinking in the LED and nowhere to be found. Bummer. Um, so there was, uh, let's see. Um, my, my first suggestion is just going to be reflash it and just use sonoff.bin um, and the flash easy process that I've been doing for, I've been doing that way for months now and I haven't had any problems. And uh, what my guess is, um, my guess is it's going to be, you know, a board, there's a board manager or a library problem. There was a time where, uh, I think it was the, was it the board manager guys? Like two, remember when it was 2.3 and 2.4 and, um, there was a problem and it usually was to do with Wi-Fi connection. So if I had to guess, I'd say that's, that's what the problem is. Um, yeah, sounds like it's in an AP setup mode. Yeah. So, and it may be just re, it may be just re, um, going back into AP mode when it shouldn't. Um, 
Flash is only Windows. It is. Yeah, you're on a Mac OS. Dang it. Um, well, you should. St how do you? How can you use? You should be able to use Arduino IDE or even uh, Platform IO to load uh, a bin file. I don't. I don't know that it should be easy. I haven't done it, but it should be easy. Um, maybe that's something I need to learn how to do myself. But try some. Try Platform IO. Um, or, or other, any other way to load that bin file. The nice thing about the bin files, it's got everything that you need already in it. It's already the, compiled and it's ready and you know it's gonna work. Um, when, you do, when you do your own compiling with Arduino, you're just open to a lot of potential errors. There's a lot of things that just have to be just right. And uh, you know, when things get updated and changed, then you run the risk that, they, that they're bad, that they're problem. Flash easy link. Yeah, sure. So essentially it's, uh, you go to, I've got it in lots of videos lately. Um, but it's the ESP easy ESP easy, um, GitHub let's control it. And then you just go to like versions or something. Where is it? ESP easy GitHub. And then you go to code and releases and then you grab this top you grab this top ESP easy mega zip and inside there you'll find the <laughs> yeah I've done like as far as this flash method I I've, I've done it in every video for the last I don't know several months um it's it's real simple so you grab this you open it then you also need to get you know the Tasmoda bin which is easy enough to get um, again, releases, you just grab, uh, and th this is for different languages if you wanted, but here's just sonoff.bin and download that. And then when you open, when you open the, um, this mega folder, it's going to be all this stuff. And this right here, this flash ESP 8266.exe, that's the, I call it flash easy cause I like to rename things. Um, so you start that. And then it'll say, oh, look, you've got something connected. And then you just select sonoff.bin. You have to save sonoff.bin into this folder. So you need sonoff.bin in this folder. Can you see that? Is it down below the edge of the screen? It's probably down below the edge of the screen. Anyways, it's right there. So that's it. And it flashes so much easier than using the Arduino IDE. So much easier. Uh, your video about the door locks has a walkthrough flash easy. Yeah, thank you, Stuart. A lot of them do. In fact, if you know, did you guys catch it? I know, I know I throw a lot of text on the screen a lot, but in this one about the, the T1 that I just finished, I said, uh, it, would it be okay if I stopped going over the flashing process in every video? <laughs> Cause I feel like I do it, I've done it and it hasn't changed. If it was changing or getting different or updated, then I'd, I'd be happy to keep doing it. I just try and not, I don't want anybody to get bored watching. I don't want anybody to feel like, oh, I've already seen this, you know, and just turn off and, and not see something later that's useful and good. Um, so if there's something that's that I've done before that hasn't changed, I prefer to just refer you to another video to do it rather than do it over again. It also saves me time, it saves me time in the editing and all that stuff. So um, just check back. There's been several videos where I've flashed just like that, including this one I just did with the T1. I did it uh, again. So. Anyone using some 868 megahertz receivers? Ooh, that can talk with Home Assistant. I want to make my own floor heating controller using a relay board. Our thermostat sends an 868 megahertz RF signal. I don't. I don't. Um, that's a good question, Jacob. I know. I, I don't see. I don't see um, Tyson in the chat here. I don't. But um, the. Um, he, he bought some kind of a translator. So it will take certain frequency of RF signals and rebroadcast them on a different frequency. And then he can receive them with the RF bridge. So if, uh, check, go to in our, in the Facebook page, um, find Tyson Brooks and ask him because he, he has the thing. I, maybe somebody else had one too, but, um, that's probably what you'll need. It's kind of like another bridge um, that will translate that frequency to a, another frequency. Uh, there may be a device out there in the wild that will take that frequency and just 
apps, put it on, you know, Wi-Fi or make it so you can send an MQTT message, uh, related to it. But I don't know about, I don't know about that for sure. I'm reasonably sure you could find some sort of a translating device. I don't know if it works on all frequencies or not, but check out Pi Light. It might be able to handle 868. There you go. Have I reduced the amount of automations you have using the off delay on binary switches? No, not yet. I did see somebody, isn't that new? Is that pretty new? I thought that was pretty new in a, in a fairly recent um, version of Home Assistant. So I haven't done it yet. So what does it do? T tell us about it, Andy. Software, is it a software defined radio? Hack RF by Great Scott that receives and sends RF. Ooh, there you go. Let's Let's check out Great Scott. So what is it called? Hack RF by Great Scott. Hack RF. Great Scott. So this is something he built. Hack RF1, Great Scott Gadgets. Software defined radio peripheral capable of transmitting reception of radio signals from one to six gigahertz. Oh, that'll do it. Designed to enable test and development of modern and next generation radio signals are from open source hardware platform. You use USB peripheral program standalone operation. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Well, here's a link. Maybe that'll work for you. Oh, I see what you're saying. It saves you creating a second automation for each binary sensor to set it back to zero to, st Oh, that's a good idea. No, I haven't. Uh, I, I haven't done that myself, Andy, but that's cool. That's great. That's useful. Cause it does seem, it does seem cumbersome to have to do that every time. The YouTuber, great Scott, it might still be the YouTuber, great Scott. This could be his stuff. Great Scott gadgets. I mean, it, I don't know how many great Scots there might be home to buy stuff, contact. I don't know. He does, if I was him, I'd have a link here to the YouTube stuff. And it doesn't look like there is. So maybe it's not the same guy. Yeah, this looks like a different logo too, right? His logo doesn't look like this. So maybe it is a different guy. That's funny. I wonder if there's a different Dr. Z's out there. Whoa. <laughs> oh. Let's see. It's the bit you messed up on your mind. So it's a great deal. Oh, cool. Yeah, that's extra cool then. Um, so I've been working on the... What's the live stream discord link? Oh, doing on YouTube. Um, I don't think I can even get the link for this to send, but anyways, so sorry, distracted, big surprise. <laughs> um, I can't remember what I was talking about. Shoot. Platform I would load dot bin on the Mac. There you go, Dave. Oh, you are watching. Oh, hey, quad flight. Thanks. Um, during the live stream, probably not my best idea, but while the wife is out, the best time for get it done. Yeah, Martin. Well, hey, you know what? If you have a problem, we're all here to help you. I, I think 8.1. Uh, oh, I haven't done 8.1 actually. That's right. That's brand new a couple days ago. I haven't done that yet. I haven't done that yet. I need to. Um, how do you like the new temperature dial on the Lovelace? It's really nice looking. I haven't used it. I haven't turned it on uh, in mine, but I certainly will, obviously, with all the new thermometer stuff I've been doing. Um, I wonder why I have a Discord channel for live stream chat. Uh, let's see. We do have a Discord channel for live stream chat, don't we, guys? Let's let's make sure that we create a link for that here. Um, let's set it. So... This will be, I don't know what the difference, having a different, having a different link, but here is a link to a special discord channel that, um, we can take the live stream discussion into. And I know, especially for like when I'm done, um, you guys want to keep talking about things. There's a way to do it. Is that what you're looking for? Quad flight? Does that help? I, I'm as much as I've done it, I'm still very novice in kind of arranging all these uh, things in the best way to have the most effective live stream and, and best use of things like Discord and stuff. So if that helps, great. Um, and if I need to use it better, let me know because I can certainly learn. Um, 
picking brands and homes to set up, are you still purely on the Pi install? Yeah, I am. What are other people using looking to set up something like? So a lot of people are using um, anything. Honestly, you could use anything. A lot of people use old servers. Um, you don't need, uh, you know, because it's headless. So you don't need a lot of that stuff. Um, and that makes it, you know, you can get something fairly cheap that's really powerful. Um, so we've talked a lot about those. Uh, Nook, people talk about the Nook uh, using that. It's small, it, expensive, but super powerful as well. Um, uh, SDR is a really interesting topic. Let's see. There you go. Andy's got a link. Andy's got some stuff for you. Look at what he's running. Good grief. Uh, yeah, so if you're talking about tablets, hey, Tim, if you're talking about tablets, let me show you um, what I've been working on. So I've done my app daemon before, right? I've got two videos where I talked about app daemon, and um, I've been redoing mine a little bit to make it a little bit more uh, useful for everybody in the house. We've added a lot of, you can't even see them all, can you? The screen's too small. I've added a lot of lights recently and a lot of controls. So, I, and I don't even have all of them on this one screen. Obviously they wouldn't all fit, but have a lot of them here. And, um, so when I, when it comes to doing something like this, so I just did, my head's in the way. I just did the alarm system thing. And this is really cool because you just put the alarm in there and then you can put the keypad stuff right here on the tablet. And, um, and it's really convenient. So we, this is what we have on our tablet downstairs. Because Lovelace, um, yeah, Lovelace is, I, I would say that you're right. Lovelace isn't quite ready to just be your tablet um, interface. It'll work okay, but it's not, it's not perfect yet. I have uh, this different browser that I use um, that's this full screen browser. And so far anyways, it doesn't seem to like Lovelace for whatever reason, or Lovelace doesn't like the live or this, this browser. Um, so then I just have to do it in silk on the on the, on the fire tablet and it works fine, but you know, I like having it all in this one full screen thing. So, and then putting this in, I'm going to do this in the video too, but putting this in was really pretty easy. Also, this is my app daemon dashboard. I can't move it for some reason. There it goes. All right. This is my app daemon dashboard. And, uh, all I had to do to add the alarm was this entry here. And then just in my layout, I just had to add this thing that says alarm. That's it. And it does everything else all on its own. So that's pretty awesome. So we still use dash, we still use dashboard a lot. This is still what's on my main tablet that's in the kitchen that I tell the wife, you know, how to do things on. And then I've added, these are really cool. I've added some buttons that will automatically play different, um, playlists on our Volumio that's on the house speakers. So I can do, my wife likes Sunday music to be nice and chill, choir music and stuff. We got some country, some Lindsey Sterling. There's a rock one too, but it's not, it's not on there because I can do it differently when I want to turn it on. That one's for the kids and such. But anyways, yeah. So I've got this, um, I still am using, and I was glad I went back to this and just kind of cleaned it up and moved some things around. And I, I like, I still like it a lot. It's still really good. Um, on the bus watching. Nice. Where are you going? Um, Google search for home assistant release notes and you'll find any info. Is there a way to disable or remove the slide out menu for guest accounts? Oh, I don't know. Maybe Paul, Paul, is that what you're answering? Oh, Hey, Rob's here. How's it going, Rob? Probably the difference between local and cloud control. Okay, good. Rob's answering somebody's question. Fantastic. Does the Hue emulator in Tasmoda let you have WS2812 string control, but directly with Hue app? And how, and how do you pair as app ask for a button press? Gosh, I, I, my guess is no, right off the bat. I think it's, um, you know, without having tried it, I think that that hue emulation in Tasmoda is fairly basic. And I think it's a hue bridge. So it's just like a, it's just like a, I don't know, an on off so simple thing. I could be wrong. If you guys know the answer to hair word, uh, let him know. I don't know the answer to that, honestly. Um, but my guess is I don't think that that emulator is going to have the functionality to control the 2812 RGBs. No, I doubt it. You're probably better off trying. I don't know if you can flash a hue thing or not. So you've got a, you've got a string of hue 2812 LEDs that you want to run with 
home assistant slash Tesmoda, right? Anybody got directions for Mr. Greenwood there on that? Um, post in Discord, which channel for live stream? There is a, there, um, there's the live stream channel. Let's find it again. Let's see, everybody's in there. There's some people in there. Oh yeah, he did. Oh, there's, oh good. There's good stuff in there already from today. Oh yeah, there's the Lovelace card. Nice. Um, I hate that. Why does the default, why is the default link always good for only one day? Come on, guys. Then connect two Sonos and two gang wall switches. There's only one null output. Would you connect the null to both Sonos ground? Uh, you mean, is that a neutral? Is that what you're talking about? Probably, Kristen. I think that's, if you're, what you're saying is, can you connect two Sonoffs to a two gang wall switch that has only one null output? I'm trying to figure out what, what, what you're trying to do. I think, um, if you're talking about neutral, if like, if you only have one, why did, why would it only have, if you have two switches, I, I don't understand the one output thing, maybe. So before I try and guess and answer a guess, um, explain to me what you mean by one null output. Then we can probably answer it for you. Okay. What's the component which gives percent plus radio button on your dashboard? Percent plus radio. So the radio, the radio is this, and this is just it, what it is, is just a, an input Boolean. It's just an input Boolean that uh, I can show you what it looks like here. Input. So it's an input Boolean like this that says, it's just real simple. Input Boolean, Sunday music, give it an icon, done. Okay. Then there's an automation that says, um, let's see, where did I put it? Oh, actually, let's just search for Sunday because that's probably going to be the best. Yeah. So then I've got this, this automation that are for quick music buttons. And uh, the automation just says any time that the input Boolean Sunday music is turned to on, then select source media player Volumio and the source is a playlist in Volumio. And the name of the playlist is Sunday. And then what I've done is just, I have it delay for one minute and then I turn the input Boolean back off. Otherwise this would get activated and it would stay activated. It would stay on. So I just turn it on and then I tell, I tell Volumio to play the playlist when it's on and then it turns itself back off, which maybe now I don't need. What was that? Uh, we just were talking about, well, it was for binary sensors, but maybe that delay off would work for this as well. But, um, cause all I'm doing with that last bit of the automation is just turning this back to off. So that's it. When I do that, now we push this button on the dashboard. This changes colors, you know, to be act the active color like this. And then after a minute, the Boolean goes back to off, but the music is playing. And so it's really slick. I was really, I had a good day. I think it was Friday or Friday or yesterday. Friday was the good day. Man, I got a lot of stuff done. It was a good day. Um, and that was one of the things that I finished and figured out. Sometimes you just have a moment of clarity, you know, and you could just like, you're, all of a sudden things that were confusing and hard to you seem really simple, man. I, I had that kind of day on Friday. It was great. <laughs> got a lot done. Uh, anybody have any issues with the latest, uh, with Z wave? I haven't used Z wave, but maybe somebody else does. Hello from Brazil. Oh, all right. Is up and running. Yep. Completely painless. Okay. That's good to know. Martin, I will be there soon because I am really excited. I probably told you I'm really excited about blink, about the new blink component with all my blink cameras. Very excited about the new Blink component. So I want to try it out. And um, I, I started it on my development Pi with uh, 0 0.80.3, but I, I didn't get too far into it. Um, my recommendation for presence detection is, um, is the, uh, isn't it funny when you stall when you're talking and then you can't remember? It's the um, own tracks, own tracks. On tracks home assistant and I use the MQTT version the M, or the HTTP. Sorry. I use the HTTP setup. Uh, dang it. I clicked it too fast. This one. 
So this is the kind of setup I use. So uh, you, that's it's as simple as that when it comes to your um, configuration. And then I don't know what this part is. I haven't done this part yet, but uh, you do have to have Duck DNS. Or that's what I that's what I use. And then you set up the app on your phone. Um, I followed these instructions and then Ben Bruh Automation's old video. It's one I'm going to do soon. I'm going to redo it soon. Uh, it's once I get done with these next couple, this one's in the next probably five or so videos I'll do. I'll do one about this. So, hey Ian. Yes, for own tracks. Been working great for me on iOS and Android. Thank you, Stone Wallace. Yeah. I, of all the ones, I mean, I, I haven't tried a bunch, but of all the ones I've heard, own track seems to be the best, seems to be the most stable and working well in late. Hope you're doing well today. I am doing well. C gray. How are you doing? Good to see you, man. Appreciate you being here. Uh, still just stuck on look only no touchy <laughs> GPS logger instead of own tracks. Oh, interesting. Okay. MP in interesting. Is that a component? We looked at this a little bit. We looked at this before, I think. Yeah, and I haven't started it yet. It's an open source app for Android. Okay, well, good. Well, I can't try it, but those of you that have Android can. Here's got some good instructions. I love it when they've got nice instructions like this. Man, how's the hack? How's Hacktoberfest going for everybody? Have you guys? Uh, anybody earned their T-shirts? You know, Hacktoberfest is. Uh, you earned, let's try, let's do, oh gosh, sorry, Mark. I haven't done markers. <laughs> so Hacktoberfest, if you guys uh, hadn't heard of it before, it's a, it's a, an event in October where if you go and uh, contribute to uh, at least five different pages on um, a variety of different GitHubs, that you earn a t-shirt. They'll send you a cool t-shirt that says, you know, Hacktoberfest or whatever. And it's just a good way to get people excited and let everybody know that you can contribute. You don't have to be like designated as a developer or anything else like that. If, you, if you're going through some of these documents or, you know, anything uh, that you see, um, certainly related to Home Assistant. I know Home Assistant is participating. I don't know that every repository participates, probably not. Uh, but you can go in and say, I think there's even a link down here at the bottom, like edit this page somewhere, right? Developers, contact, support, themes, privacy. Edit this on GitHub. If I went, if I were to go in here and say, oh, I think, you know, I've got some good pictures or some good things I can add. I can go in here and I can just edit it. And I, and then when I submit it, um, I can hit, I can edit and then there's a way to submit it. And then you submit it. And it's a, do they call that a pull request? I don't remember exactly what the terminology is, but it's a, you know, you submit your proposed changes and then some of the developers look at it they look at your changes and they go, oh yeah, that's cool. That's a great contribution approved. And now your contribution just became part of the official documents that everybody reads and looks at. So if you, if you're going through stuff and you're finding, uh, that, oh, there's some information that I wish was in there, put it in there, you know, don't, don't wait, don't, don't just, uh, keep it to yourself, share it. And, uh, we'll all get that much smarter, that much faster. So that's my plug for Hacktoberfest. Hey, from Denmark. How's it going, man? Google Maps, Google Maps tracker. I, I had trouble with using two different things, Phil. And I think I also had trouble because I would, with Google Maps tracker, I would VPN in from, from work to my house and then it would think I was home. So um, that was the trouble I was running into. So I was looking at, like, if you look at my, um, if you look at my work hours tracker, uh, it's like, it's like, I haven't worked at all this week. There it is above my head. It's like, I haven't worked at all. And that's, that was more of a glitch of the, um, the tracking than the fact that I actually didn't work. Right. So that was part of it. Maurice, what is that? Oh, awesome. Thanks, man. That's amazing. That's really, that's fantastic. Thank you, Maurice. What should I should do something special for Maurice? What do you guys think we should do? Maurice is awesome. I don't even know what to do. That's I appreciate that. Thank you. Oh, did I say it? I'm sorry. Did I say she who shall not be named? I didn't mean to. Greetings from India. Maurice, thank you, brother. I do appreciate you. That's that's fantastic. Obviously don't do it for the money, but I do appreciate it. it sure helps uh helps get the wife off the back when I wanna buy projects and stuff. 
unless you, and if your Google Maps works okay with my VPN on iOS. It was my laptop, I think, but maybe not. I don't know. Maybe it's because other people, maybe it's, maybe it's because my browser was also logged in uh, here at home. I don't know. Maybe it's just me, Seagree. I, I, I certainly, I had trouble with it. I don't know what the deal was, but uh, Google Voice for everything, and I have not figured out how to do how to control your MQTT devices from Home Assistant. Um, you use in the cloud, and then you did the you did the um, you have to add this. I don't know what they call it in Google, but the skill essentially in Google that'll work. That makes no sense with Google Tracker. Okay, maybe it's not. Maybe I did it wrong then. That's very, very, very possible. Maybe I did it wrong. If it didn't have anything to do with the VPN. Probably true. Probably true. No dark sky in Europe? Oh, that's too bad. Any way of having a sensor to detect? Um, to detect which mains line? Oh, yeah. Yeah, those exist. Um... So what you want, so what you're, if I think what you're asking there, Eli, is you want to be able to, you want to, you know, plug something into a receptacle or attach it to a wire in a bedroom and then figure out where it goes in the, in the circuit breaker. Is that what you're asking? Because there are definitely devices that do that. <laughs> All the motorized curtains out on the market are costly. Any cheap DIY? Oh, were you asking me about that as Warren? Somebody was asking me about that. It all comes down to um, just getting it to control a motor. And then, you know, if you have a string on your curtains that pulls them over, you just, you'll have, you'll have to DIY it. Yeah. I don't know of anybody that's just like plug and play kind of like Rob did. Um, so we'll have to try and come up with something for curtains. But if anybody else, anybody else have any good suggestions? I think if you, some sort of a pulley on a motor, hooked up to the to the wire that uh, pulls your curtains or the string that pulls your curtains and then you just have to control that motor and you can control that motor with you know you certainly can control it with a switch like a relay and um, you know I guess you'd have to have a power source or the, or a motor controller there's a variety of ways you could control that motor but that's what I would suggest uh, not having done it I'm out. Thanks. See you, Winman. Have a good day. Which alarm systems do I use and which blink, blink cameras? So the alarm system I use, uh, I have, we have a wired alarm system in the house that's been here forever that stopped working. And now we have, um, what I've used is connected. I've used this connected and, um, this was a Kickstarter. It's a uh, guy's name is Nate. He's a good guy. Um, and essentially what he's got is a node MCU board and a, um, custom board for connecting your zones. And, um, this, you know, runs his special little software that he made. Um, and then it integrates into home assistant pretty easily. Um, you can look at my home assistant, my configuration on connected. This is the upcoming video, um, but so it connects pretty easily here and you just list all your zones and what they, what their names are. And then you have to go, um, then you have to actually, what you have to do then is set up, I set up a manual, um, a manual alarm panel. That's this guy here. And in the video, I'll explain what all these times are and stuff, but you know, they're just the normal delays you would expect. And then once you've set this up, um, you still need an automation to um, put it all together so that all these different things will trigger the alarm if the alarm is armed. And then um, when the alarm is triggered, once the alarm is triggered, you have a separate automation that describes what happens when the alarm is triggered. So my suggestion is if you want a, if you want a cheap alarm system, uh, the Sonoff RF bridge with the motion sensors and the door sensors that you can get with it, um, and then home assistant and you're, you're golden, right? Cause everything with the RF bridge, you, you just end up with, instead of this kind of a setup with connected, you just end up with binary sensors and the binary sensors, scroll, 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 make everybody see sick. Sorry, sorry, sorry. 
And the binary sensors just look like ordinary stuff. Like here, you can just use these binary sensors. And um, then you just set when you're doing your automations, the binary sensor. So for example, this, this actual garage motion sensor is connected to my RF bridge. And uh, in here, the garage motion is right here. So it's this sensor and it's connecting to the RF bridge. And then it's listed in my alarm triggers automation um, so that if the alarm is armed and anybody walks in the garage, it's going to go off. It'll trigger the alarm. So it's pretty cool. Not secure at all. Better go with wired or at least Z-Wave or Zigbee. Okay, that's fair. That's fair. Um, I, I don't worry too much about anybody hacking my RF bridge sensors. That's just me. Um, but I certainly agree with you. People can grab codes and they can do things with your RF sensors if you're, if they want to. Can't argue with that. So, but uh, if you don't have the option of wired, um, the likelihood that you'll get robbed by somebody that has the knowledge to steal your RF codes is pretty low, but it's possible. So I don't want to discourage you. Certainly if you're guarding something like, you know, your business or something where you've got a lot of valuable stuff or a lot of really important things, then RF might not be the way to, you know, the 433 anyways might not be the way to do it. Been thinking about picking up one of those cellular bridges and making a video about hooking those to Home Assistant to do alerts about Home Assistant going down and alarms going off. Oh, that's cool. That'd be great, Rob. I haven't know. I don't know what about the cellular bridges. That sounds cool. Also, it'll it'll essentially attach to like 3G and it'll send you um, a message when you're not when you're not connected or it'll connect through through 3G or whatever and send a message. That's great. New thermostat is hard coded title rather than using the name of the entity. Oh, well, that's too bad. Maybe they'll change that at some point. It's nice to be able to put your own names on it. What am I using for a siren, Alejandro? So I'm actually, I don't have a siren connected to my boards. My, my alarm boards are way down in the basement in like the bowels of the house. And um, I don't think a siren would do a ton of good there. I could, I could, you know, run some wires and set it up somewhere else. So what I've done is I have she who shall not be named because somebody didn't want me to say her name. Um, but I have her do a text to speech announcement. And I have a, a, a Volumio siren sound that's just a playlist from an album on Spotify that plays over our speakers inside and outside the house and in the garage. Oh, actually, no, the garage is the, is the um, Amazon Echo one, but that's what I do. So you can see what my, my automation or my, um, what happens when my alarm is sounded, when my alarm goes off is right here. So there's uh, a notification that goes to everybody's phone that says the alarm has been triggered. That's just by notify, notify, it just sends a notification to pretty much every device, I guess, that it can, that the alarm has been triggered. Um, and then I've got a bunch of these media players. This is all the Amazon Echo media players. And it's got a text to speech message that she says, this is what um, has happened. And then I've got a couple different Volumio Pies playing different things, but this is the Volumio that goes over the main house. It's got a playlist called Home Alarm and it just plays an album from Spotify that is a whole bunch of police sirens. Um, and that's it. And then I do have it flash a bunch of LEDs, red and blue, and then I have it send a specific, um, specifically tailored message to my wife's phone and my phone. This is probably unnecessary, but it just as an example. Since we, since we get this one up here as well, the notify, notify one. So that's what I do when my alarm goes off. <laughs> I like Mark's solution. You know what Mark, uh, Mark says, uh, if you're worried about somebody hacking your RF alarm system, get a dog. That's a great, that's a great idea. So I think what I'm going to do here actually is this one that, this one that says sneak caught. This was from the maker fair. This was one of our, you know, I see you thief. It was the dragon, you know, saying that. And I think what I'm going to replace this with is uh, Spotify has an album of dogs barking. And so I, this, this box is just uh, connected to some speakers in my office. So if I just, you know, have the speakers in my office and then I have this dog bark, it'll sound like there's dogs in the house, you know, and that might get people to run out too. <laughs> oh, see, see tender. Yes. I would love to share my, I would love to share my uh, config. I, I've been trying to do the post it to GitHub thing and I just haven't taken the time to understand it and get it to work right. But I want to, I've got it pretty well, um, you know, pretty well 
it's all free of passwords and things like that. Uh, I just need some help. If somebody knows how to do it easily to get it to upload to GitHub and can walk me through it, or just maybe I can just hand you the keys and let somebody do it for me. But, um, yeah, I'd be happy to share my configurations and automations and all this stuff. Uh, I'd be happy to. I know Frank's talked, Frank has told me about it, about doing it a lot of times. And he said he'd help me out. I just haven't asked him again. Does notify, notify iOS iPhone only work if you're using the home assistant app? Yeah, I believe so. Basic pilot. I believe so. Um, but it does give you a, let's see. Yeah, I think it does. Does anybody have a different answer? I, my, my guess is yes, basic pilot. It, it would only give you uh, something if you're using the, the home assistant app, but if, but notify, notify, I don't know. I mean, you gotta have, if you have, would it pop up anywhere that there's a web browser? I don't know. Not sure. Can't tell you. I wish I could. I'm sorry. Do I have any ideas about using if this, then that to control two different lights with the same commands on Google assistant that turns on the correct light based on which device the command comes from? Woo. <laughs> um, I don't know. I'd have to think about that. I don't have anything off the top of my head. Maybe somebody else does. HTML5 notifications work on Android. Awesome. Yeah. Let's see. What was I going to, what else was I going to tell you? I have, um, so I have now, let's go to the desk camera for a second because there has, these, you guys have probably all seen um, Luma's HA switch plates, right? I know I've posted links before to his um, GitHub about how to build them and all that. Um, and I know like J, J After Dark has been working on it. Oh, which reminds me, J After Dark is in Wisconsin and needs something 3D printed. Is anybody close by? <laughs> they, yeah. I, I can try and print it and send it to you, James. It just might, it might, We'll see how it turns out and it might take a little bit. I, I need to print some too for these. So this is what he was asking about. This is this is actually just the Nexteon display. Sorry, the webcam seems to be lagging. This is just the Nexteon display and I just finally got these in the mail yesterday. So with these, you can build that HA switch plate. And there's been several people that have been working on this lately. Um, even though it's been out for a long time. He did it. He did it a long time ago. Um Monkey with high voltage could kill you yourself. Okay, that's like the scary page. We don't want the scary page yet. Let's start out with the easy page. Um, so it does these, oops, can't see it. Desk and right monitor. Oh, and then not my face. Okay, that's great. You don't need to see me anyways. So um, you can see what this is supposed to look like in the end. And uh, they're pretty cool. Touch displays, you can do color. J After Dark's been working on doing um, some uh, custom icons on there, you know? So this has really got a lot of great potential. And um, and I know uh, who else, uh, uh, several people have been working on these lately, um, working on doing them. So we're gonna have some, this is gonna get hot. This is gonna get hot, but there are gonna be a lot of people building these uh, finally, even though, like I said, it's been out for a long time, but we're finally getting around to where uh, Luma's genius has trickled down and where the rest of us are catching up. Um, so anyways, I just finally got mine yesterday in the mail. Very excited. Very excited to get these, get these going. Um, should be a lot of fun. Should be a lot of fun. And I'm happy to see what uh, James is brewing up with his custom stuff. Let's, uh, there we go. Show link for the screen. Sure. So the best place to get them, I think is probably, um, let's see. I don't remember who had them for the less they sell them. IT sells them directly. They IT makes them. I believe they seem to. He's got this, he's got links in that GitHub also which I, yeah, he's got links here. Um, so here you go. And there's a bunch of different sizes. 
the switch box that Luma did is is uh, designed to be the 2.4, the 2.4 inch model, which I think should be about $15 maybe, something like that. 3.5, 3.2, maybe they're sold out. They may be sold out of them. If they're sold out of them, it's because I've got 10 of them in the mail still coming. Yeah. So let's try. Uh, Amazon has them. Oh, okay. I wonder how much. I've been happy that Amazon's stuff isn't always... Uh, terribly overpriced when you consider the shipping 3.2, 2.4. So here, so yeah, I think you might be able to get these, you might be able to get them for $15 from directly from China somewhere. Um, so if you can wait a month, you can save, you know, that's a significant amount, but if you don't mind paying 20 bucks, um, there's this one, I'll get you this link and then let's look, I'm going to give you the direct it link. Cause I think that might be the cheapest place. Um, so you obviously got yours, James, huh? Uh, I teed. And then they've usually dedicate a whole section of them here, yeah. They've got big ones too, seven inch. Here's the 2.4. So not even that, right? 1640. And, um, but they, I don't, think they do free shipping usually. So that plus a couple dollars, man, Amazon's not that bad. Um, and then we were going to look at AliExpress. Yeah, I think Banggood might be sold out of them. And honestly, it's probably because they are sending me a bunch. So I apologize. It's my fault. Banggood is sold out. Next on 2.4. So there you go. Here's 2.4. I don't see anything about shipping. Oh, this is $13 to ship them to the U S here's 15 with free shipping. So I think so far, yep. Yeah, here's probably the cheapest, cheapest. Is that right? You see anything else? Oh, nope. Per piece. Let's just make sure that this is the only one that says free shipping for sure. This is going to be a big, ugly link. I apologize for how big and ugly the link is. It might not even let me post it. It won't even let me post it because it's exceeds it's 583 characters. Oh, uh, anyway, so you guys saw what I did. AliExpress, Nexteon 2.4, you can find it. <laughs> I have to delete this link or I can't type anything in the chat now. Um, about 10 from Banggood as well, sorry. <laughs> so it's between me and Citendra. We've, we've, uh, and James maybe. Oh no, James bought them from Amazon. Yeah. How, how are these uh, HA plates compared to having a tablet? The Tim, these HA plates are really small. Uh, you have to write the code to get them to do what you want them to do. Um, so they're super customizable, but along with super customizable, you know, it's more work. So, um, the, a tablet, I think these, the, he's made these, the design, the idea for these was they go in your switch in your wall and he, what he's got in inside, where is the, is it the wiki page? He's got a cool little diagram where it shows the innards. No, it's not issues. Is it releases? No. Insights. I don't remember where it is. Anyways, he's got a cool little 3D. Um, he's got a cool little 3D image of it and shows it. Uh, but what he's got essentially is it hooks up to mains directly. So he's got a power supply. It's a power supply, a D1 mini, and this this little tiny touch plate. And then he wrote the code that you put on the D1 mini. You can do some additional modifications to it through a Nexteon has a, has a developer software that you can get and modify how things look. Um, and then, yeah, you can have whatever, whatever options you want essentially, or I think it'll, it'll connect to home assistant and you can display and, um, control all kinds of things. So, um, I think it's the, the, the reason for having these is you can put them in, uh, in one room and that can then control the lights in that room, or it can do other things like this will be great. 
to be able to set it up so that it's an alarm and I can quickly just, we can walk in the door and we can do, 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 and that. It's on the tablet right now, that, so that's fine. But this could be in any room. You know, you could disable it or, or enable it from any room. So I think uh, they both have their purpose. I don't think either one, I don't think this is gonna replace a tablet and, then, and I don't think uh, this is useless if you have a tablet. I think you can, I think both have their place and they're both gonna be useful in some situations. I, um, I probably am gonna have more of these than I'm gonna be able to use. So that might be something I could, um, you know, have some fun with for a giveaway or something like that. On Streamlabs, the broadcaster doesn't have donations enabled. Do you want that? Sure, let's do it. I don't know how. Uh, somebody donated, but I don't know how they did. Help me, tell me what to do, Christian. Hello from St. Petersburg, Russia, awesome. They're also more, more laggy than a tablet. Oh, okay, could be true. They probably, I mean, it's a D1 mini. It's not got a huge brain. I guess there's a processor in the display as well. But yeah, if you've got a good, if you've got a good, um, a good amount of information that it's trying to process, it could definitely be small. Cryptocurrency. Ooh, that's cool. I don't have any cryptocurrency. <laughs> uh, how can I get Home Assistant to do something on an SMS? Um, what are you trying to do, Georgia Tech? There's all kinds of ways. Um, Stopping by to say hi from Florida. Oh, hey, how's it going? It's Carlo. It's possible to use the at home assistant cameras to home kit. I don't know. Does anybody know? Webhooks. Um, you know, there is a way. So I used talking the SMS thing. Um, I don't know. What do you guys know about SMS components? What do you guys know about SMS components and home assistant? I, the one time I've messed with SMS and Home Assistant, it was about, uh, I used if this, then that. And they're, um, they're whatever you want to call it, component. So it looks like there's a couple. Twilio, there's a Twilio component. So they're probably something you could do with Twilio. And I did also see Click Send. Click Send looks like another... I'm guessing these are, you know, sort of these um, SMS apps. Message Bird. Wasn't, what was everybody using for a while? There was another one. There was an Android one. Um, I can't think of what it is now. Has anybody been having trouble with the, um, has anybody been having trouble with the actionable notifications? I just was scrolling past this old video and, uh, as I haven't been able to get my actionable notifications to work. Telegram, that's the one. Thank you, Quad Flight. Telegram was the one um, that's good for SMS and Home Assistant. So this was the one that I know a lot of people used for a long time. And maybe a lot still do. Whoa, no, I just lost my chat. There you go. Zanzito. Oh, somebody told me about Zanzito. Maybe that was you, Joe. When are you sharing your YAML? I'm going to try, Ian. I, I just need to figure out exactly how to get it to automatically upload to GitHub. And, you know, when I cha make changes, it automatically backs up. It's just one of those things. I've got all these things I want to get done. And since that's such a, I mean, that's, it, it is important. But most of, most of my things I got to get done have to do with getting a video done or, you know, actually getting something around the house. So that one keeps falling down on the, on the priority list. Um, I should just post it and then worry about, you know, updating it another time. Uh, let's see. Actionable notifications are still going strong. What issues are I having? Man, my issues are, they're just not, it's not popping up. Like when I get the, I get the notice on my phone that says, um, you know, the garage door is open or whatever, and it doesn't give me the button to push. So I don't know. I haven't, I haven't really honestly tried to fix it either. I just know it hasn't been working. So I don't know, but that's great. If yours are working, you're on, you're on the latest home assistant and the latest, uh, iOS and all that. So if you, if it's working for you, that means that's good. That means it works. It's just a matter of, I got to figure out what to do <laughs> to get it to work. Uh, if the long press on your phone, maybe I'm not long pressing. Maybe that's what it is. Gone into your app and hit update push settings. Maybe ah, I'm sure I have, but I'll do it again. And not in a while, maybe. Maybe that's probably part of it. I know I did that initially when it wasn't working. Uh, 
Let's see. Mm, location. Notifications. Update push settings. Okay. We'll do that. I need to go back through and just make sure that nothing's changing my automations and stuff too. Cause I, I don't even know. Unfortunately, like it was one of those things I noticed that it stopped working, but at the time I didn't, I didn't put in my mind what I had just changed or what had happened. And, um, so I don't know what, what, what it was related to in time. So it makes it harder to figure out where the potential problem is. If I'd have known, if I'd have, if I'd have mentally known right away when it happened, I could have said, oh, well, that was because I, you know, I got a new phone or I updated this or that. Um, and I don't remember, unfortunately, when exactly it stopped working. VS code to edit your YAML. Then you can enable get to push when you're done making changes. No kidding. Is that easy? Because that's what I'm using right here. Is that in some kind of settings in here? All right, send me some, how about, how about send me a link with instructions? <laughs> John, send me a link of how to use, of how to, to do it um, with VS code. Cause I, I, I could, I use VS code a lot. I sometimes use um, sublime text, but I could just as easily switch to using VS code all the time. And if it would update every time, that would be great. Telegram works the other way around. Oh, sorry. Darn it. Tileboard blog. Have I tried tileboard? Oh, I don't know. Has anybody tried tileboard? Oh, I've seen tileboard. Tileboard home assistant. Yep. Yeah. yeah, but it looks very like windows. What was that? They were calling that windows seven kind of Metro thing or whatever they're calling it. That looks super cool. That would, that would be really nice on a tablet. No, I haven't tried it, James. I have not, but it looks great. I'll share the link with everybody. You guys want to try it? Uh, switch to Hasio, and I'm having issues getting MQTT to work. Um, so it's probably in your. Um, I, I want to open mine because it's gonna. It'll most likely re reveal some sort of password. Oh, I guess I could do it with my development board. My development pi. Um, so in Hasio, when you're looking at your mosquito broker, this is my guess is probably in here is where you have some sort of a problem. That'd be my first guess. Um, so do you have SSL correct, whether it's true or false? Um, and then you need a username and password. Those are the biggest things. If you're using SSL, then you need to have your stuff down here for your keys and whatever. But if I had to guess, it's going to be something in here. Um, cause everything else should be okay. When you switch to Hasio, just when you do this, this config, it's, it's, you know, something here is, is messed up probably. That guy from Florida has a tile board video. Oh, which guy, which guy is that? Is that the guy in his car? Is that Adrian? Which by the way, I, I like to try and promote all these other guys that are making videos. Um, so you guys know Rob makes videos. Um, did you blur Travis has been making videos lately? Tony made videos. Oh, and Hey, send some love to Tony. Tony just like had a, hopefully he's okay with this. He posted on Facebook, so he must be okay. But Tony, Tony Lamont, you know, our ESP 32 guru, um, he's in the hospital with some hip pain and maybe he's going to have to have a replacement. And I think he's, you know, he's having some health issues. So um, say hi to him when you see him on the street. He's, he's a good guy. He's made some videos recently. Um, J after dark was doing some stuff. I like one, we were list. people were asking me last stream, like what, what other uh, YouTube guys do I watch a lot besides like, besides like, um, Rob and, um, uh, one M tech was one that I hadn't mentioned then that I did like, uh, Carlo started making some, I saw that that, that was cool. It was useful. Um, uh, and then, um, Adrian is the, uh, Burns H a guy. He's smart, super smart. Everything he does, he does on the command line. So it's not as applicable. Like for me, I don't, I don't get in and do the command line. He's, he's running home assistant on an Ubuntu server. And so his way of doing things is, is usually going to be different than me. So I don't always, um, and I'm, I'm not always able to use his stuff, but he does good stuff. He's smart. He knows a lot about home assistant, a lot about Linux. And uh, he's a wizard on the command line. 
So that's Burns HA. Let me give you some. Um, if you guys haven't seen him, he's a guy. He sits in his car, and somebody asked him, "Why do you sit in your car and do all your videos?" And it says because his house is too noisy, or something like that. This guy, I am subscribed. This is a different account. I, oops. Oh, no, I did it wrong. There. Cool. Uh, the fans, people are asking, waiting for DigiBlur's Fan02 video. Yeah, me too. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to let him do it because he would be the one that's teaching me. Um, and I'd like to see him do it before I even do it myself because I know it's going to be a little tricky. So. Tileboard is on the hookup. Did you do... Did you do tile board, Rob? How did, I didn't miss that, did I? Oh, that's the guy from Florida. <laughs> yeah, it's true. He is the guy from Florida. <laughs> Sorry. I did a tile board video? Okay, good. No, he didn't. Okay. Yeah, I would have caught that. I would have seen that if he did. There must be another guy from Florida. <laughs> I don't think anybody... I think actually the only one that's done it is Burns. So there you go. He did it a month ago. Tile board install. Installing tile board and Docker. So yeah, Burns HA. He's your guy. I don't know. This looks like quick demo of tile board by Alex. And then the rest of them are about tiles, <laughs> like installing tiles in your house. How to install tiles in your house. That's not what we're looking for. So you go, Burns HA. He's the only one. He's got the market cornered on tile board. Um, because Burns, I'm using Emphasis on Ubuntu VM. Yeah. I, I just want to see the MCP integrations. MCP is? Help me out. I should know. Never sub so fast. <laughs> the acoustics in the car is better. I believe it. Uh, it's hard to, it's, it's hard to record in the house a lot of times. All right. Uh, I've used your video to get my floor plan working. Great. Can't figure out how to integrate it into Lovelace and move the icons to different rooms based on their room presence value. Interesting. Um, so James, let's see. I it, when I put things in a in a place on my floor plan in um, Lovelace, it's only like. I'm doing it all based on the coordinates and it's, and unfortunately I think it's a bit, I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like that way of doing it terribly well. Cause it's what happens is like, I tried to change my floor plan. And when I did try to change my floor plan, um, what it did was it totally shifted everything, right? It, nothing was in the right place anymore. So Essentially, this is just, this floor plan is just a PNG file that's laying underneath everything else, right? So when I'm on the upstairs, it's this PNG. This is the, this is the PNG file that's our second floor, and that's this one that shows all the rooms. And then to put everything on it, uh, I've got to put all of these icons, estate icons, and then they're in the style, I designate where they are. It sounds like what you're trying to do, if, I, if I'm if i understanding, help me if I'm not. Floor plan doesn't work properly in Lovelace. It just renders the static SVG file. Um, you're got, you've got two things, you're, you're mixing two things. You're mixing HA floor plan and Lovelace and they don't, they don't mix. HA floor plan is gonna be um, an SVG and on your SVG in the, in that, in that drawing file, that SVG drawing file, you're going to have links to specific components. Um, in order to use that floor plan with Lovelace, you need to save it as a PNG and then it will sit there as just the image. You won't be able to click on just that image. You'll have to then on top of that, put your entities like I was doing here. So that's probably where you've got confusing. So you built the Lovelace interface independently of HA floor plan. Yes. Yes. That is correct. 
Yeah. They're two, they're two very different. What, essentially, uh, what Lovelace has done with this, um, which one is it ever? This uh, picture, is it picture elements? Yeah. With this picture elements card is made it so that you can do HA floor plan. And on and HA floor plan was really cool, but uh, I did have some troubles with it. So you need to define each entity as a picture element. No, you need to define. So um, you need to define for you need to you need to start with the basis, the underlying part, which is this picture element, and then the picture that you want to use. That's your floor plan. Okay, you can ignore this cut this part up here. This custom this part. Um, I thought I did a video about Lovelace and the floor plan specifically and should have hopefully covered some of this. Then what you have to do is you define your entities as a type. Okay. So these are cards and under elements here, you're defined. Now you define all your entities where they're going to be on the floor plan. So this first one is just an image. And the reason it's an image is because I want it to be activated by using a, and when it's activated, I get a, a GIF that plays. And so it looks like it's moving. So that's type of file or that type of element is an image. Most of them are state icons. And if it's a state icon, that's essentially just this image, whatever the icon is in home assistant, that icon will show up here. Okay. Um, then you have, uh, other kinds. Let's see what other kinds are there. Uh, state label. That's just for text. That's these ones here. That's just the text for the thermos. Thermo and I think I'm getting, this brings me to another point. I'm getting some heat from my light switches. I think like when I'm putting my, my temperature sensors in with my light switches, I think I'm getting some, some, uh, aberrant readings because it is not, I don't think it's 78 degrees in this room. It might be, uh, I hope it's not. Um, but I think I'm getting a little bit of heat trickle from, the from the switch when I've connected the the temperature sensor and put most of it in the box. So that's another sort of uh oh on the last video, the T1 video. So, anyways, there's a lot of there's a lot to Lovelace, but I think James, the big the big question or the big aha moment for you is yeah, Home Assistant Lovelace, two different things, and so you you can still use the floor plan that you drew for HA floor plan. Just save that as a PNG and then use it as the background. And then you put all of your uh, entities on top of it in a variety of ways. You can do it in a variety of different ways. Um, all right, where are we at? Yeah, you can see the values when you place. Okay, good. All right, what does Andy say? 2Pi0W is looking for ideas of what to do with them to interface with Home Assistant. Anybody got any ideas how he can make use of them? Pi zeros, get some cameras. Pi zero Ws, get the, get the, um, I would, I would suggest somebody else was telling me about this. Who was telling me, I don't want to take their idea. I can't remember who it was. Um, take their, uh, take the, the, the last version of the Pi cam. It's still an HD camera and it's only like five bucks. The new version is, is like, I don't know if it's super extra revo resolution or something else, but it's like 15, 20 bucks. But if you get the old one, because if you want to keep it cheap, it's still a very good camera. You mount that Pi cam on your Pi zero W and then you, there's a, there's a, Linux package called motion. I want to say there are several that you can just set it up as an IP camera. And, uh, there's some really cool videos about, Oh, motion eye on the zero. There you go, Frank. Hey, Frank, how's it going? Frank says motion eye on the zero. Um, and then you can set it up as an IP camera and there are really cool. There's some, there's some, uh, really simple ways to use little servo motors and make pan tilt zoom on those as well. So with your, with your Pi zero W's, you could have some, um, some pretty cool pan tilt zoom, um, cameras. Let me show you mine. This, uh, you see that this is my Pi zero powered, partially broken at the moment. Uh, pan tilt zoom. Look at this thing. Pan tilt zoom. Century gun, the camera is supposed to go here. And I built all this garbage underneath it. See all this? I don't know if I, well, you can see it. It's, it's 3D printed turret stuff with some big, huge, um, I can't get it to get in the screen. Sorry, fellas. 
There's some more pictures of it. And it's got these big stepper motors. These are the ones that Rob used in his blinds. Um, but it's not, as you can tell, it's not entirely working. And I think it's a, it's a problem. Um, I don't know. I, I'm not sure exactly how to fix it. I, I tried to do it all on my own instead of um, just copying something and I probably made it harder for myself. So, but the idea there is um, to have a pretty cool sentry gun that you can see what's happening and you can pan, tilt, zoom and shoot. Um, so a sentry gun that you can control from the website. So it's definitely a work in progress. It's definitely a work in progress. I, I feel you must do a video about that turret gun. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna talk about it briefly in my um, alarm video, and that reminds me, these guys I I owe these poor fellows at DF Robot because they sent me the stuff to build that thing a long time ago. They sent me the motors, they sent me the motor controllers, and of because of my own failures, it just hasn't come together. And they've been super patient, you know, Rob, you probably experienced this or some of the other guys, if you, if people send you products for things, they'll, man, they'll send you products and then some of them will hound you. They're not mean about it, but it's just, I feel bad, right? They're just constantly saying, Hey, where's my thing? You know, did you do your thing? Did you use my thing? Um, these guys didn't bug me at all for like six months, you know, and I've just been feeling more and more guilty about not having done anything with it. So I want to make sure just to give them some, give them some, uh, some screen time here. They've got some really cool stuff. If you're into robots or, or any of this kind of stuff and they sell lots of the sensors and displays and stuff, but their main thing is building these kinds of robots and stuff. What I should have just asked them for and what I told them I would do, I said, why don't I just buy a kit from you and I'll just do that instead um, to help them out. But like, look at this thing, Devastator tank. That looks awesome. What does this say? Share the tabbed blog on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, or mainstream platforms. non -DF Robot members are welcome to enter by sharing. Oh, so you can win this. Ha, huh. cool. Share to win giveaway. All right. Sweet. Well, how about I post this link and you guys can all share it and you guys can try and win that robot kit. That'd be super awesome. <laughs> that gun is amazing. Only problem with the Pi camera is night mode. You need to hack some IR stuff. So yeah, this, so if you wanted to use the, if you wanted night mode, the newer cameras, and unfortunately mine's broken. So here it is. This is, this is the newer camera and I lost one of the lenses for the IR, but this newer camera, you can get the infrared, um, stuff. Uh, these, these two lights on the sides are for infrared. Um, but I had it in a box and one of them fell off because they just, they just barely kind of clip on there. And so it just kind of got loose and it popped off and now it's just gone. I don't know where it is. I've looked for it and looked for it and I can't find it, but yeah, the newer camera. So if you want to spend a little extra money, if you want it to be uh, infrared, you can, you can do the newer camera. Think your camera would defend the front porch. Yeah, I, I want the, exactly. I want it to defend the front porch. So my, okay. So you, we're all, we're all of the same ilk here, right? All of us are, are the same kinds of guys. And, uh, so we probably all have the same kinds of thoughts. And I, in my mind, I had pictured this gun, uh, when somebody comes to the door and I get an image of it, or I get a motion detection, I can look and see, um, who it is. And then this, have this gun drop out of the, the patio, right? We've got this ceiling in the patio. I wanted it to drop down like something out of star Wars and be able to do this and start pelting, you know, shooting the machine gun, the little tablets at people that was my dream. So haven't done it. Um, Colin has already done this with a Nerf gun. Yeah. There's a lot of guys out there that have done them. And what I need to do is just rather than just try and do it myself, I need to just take theirs and just build theirs, you know? And, uh, so anyways, that's what I'll do. Have I checked this idea with your wife? Yes. She does not like it, Frank. <laughs> she doesn't like it at all, which is another reason why it hasn't, uh, it hasn't made it into fruition. She didn't think it was very cool to have a turret gun drop down and start shooting people on the porch, but I thought it was a great idea. <laughs> Don't forget to turn the lawn sprinklers on as well. Good, good call, Carlo. Good call. <laughs> and motion track them. They would freak out. Did you guys see that? There's, there is, uh, uh, I don't have the links anymore probably, but on YouTube, you can find 
guys who have been running, you know, they'll, they'll set up a sentry gun like that and they've made it track people. And so it'll track, you know, somebody will walk by and it'll shoot them and it'll track them as they're going automatically. I wanted it to be kind of like a first person shooter view. So, you know, you've got WASD and you're, and you're shooting with the space bar, you know, that's what I was looking for. I want that kind of experience. <laughs> yeah. Shoot the raccoons in your beehives at night remotely for sure, man, for sure. Do I have a link to that camera? Um, it's just the pie cam, but I can always grab links. Oh, it's 12 o'clock. Okay. We're getting close. Um, pie camera. Come on in, bud. I can hear you there. Pie camera V2. So this was the one, this was the one I had. See, it's a little more, it's a little more pricey, the pie cam, um, but it's got the infrared. I don't know if the five megapixel. So it's cool. But let's see if we can find the old one too, because somebody was showing me that the old one is much better. It's all using computer vision and pipe pink pill. Yeah. So which one is that Sorry, already working? I'm not sure about that. To, oh, cool. It's integrating the Michael Reeves video about putting the laser pointer in the person's eye to use home intrusion. Oh, sweet, Rob. That's going to be awesome. Also a great channel. Which one? Stuart, tell me which one. Colin, oh, he's done one. Let's find him. Well, let's do this before I get any more distracted. You know how that is. So here's the older Pi camera. This one comes with some lenses. Do they have just a generic one? This one's probably fine. Revision 1.3. This one's probably fine. So this was not going to have your, you know, it's not going to have your, um, your motion stuff or, or not motion, your infrared stuff, but it's also going to be a bit cheaper. You can get them cheaper other places. This is just to give you a link so you can look at specs. Um, all right, let's look at that. Let's, let's look at Colin. I want to look at this Colin. How do you spell his last name again? C-O-L-I-N-F-U. Colin Furs. Wow. Yeah. Seven million. Oh yeah, I've seen this. So he built one of these too. Nerf. Yeah. So that's going to be cool. I did see though, if you just type a uh, sentry gun, AR-15, I'm trying to see if I can find the one. So some of these, I mean, these guys have some of these rigged up to be real guns. This one, I think I watched. This one was pretty good. He built his all out of just wood and stuff. So he's paintball, but it's real simple, you know, very big hardware and stuff. Not, not really very small, but with the ability to 3d print stuff, where's the one, there's a ones where some kids were doing it in there in a shop and it was really pretty cool. Anyways, there's plenty of these. Oh yes, this guy. Yeah, Linus Tech. He's got some too. Anyways, we'll we'll get one. It'll be fun. To get Canadian affiliate links? Um I don't know. I think I don't know how it works. I think so. I don't know how it works. Ask me on Discord, Matheson, and I'll and I'll find you some I'll find some way to do it. Please sub to Confuse. You'll love it. I, I have. I just is not on this account, but I will. This, oh, this guy, this guy did it with a real gun. This guy was crazy. I saw that one too. But there's one where it, they're in a shop and they're using just a, like a Nerf gun and it's really pretty well done. And that's the one where they have tracking. Probably several of these have some sort of tracking. You know, but yeah, the ones that use a Raspberry Pi or something like that, and then use tracking. Yeah, that's Linus Tech's. I've watched his. Anyways, I, mine is probably like one or two steps away from actually functioning. Oh, look, here's one that's. This guy's got one that that tracks. Fully automated paintball sentry gun. Yeah. Oh, he's only. <laughs> he's so I don't know. If, he doesn't talk about how to build it, does he? I don't know what he's got. I don't know what he's using. I'll have to watch this one later. 
anyways, fun stuff. So that's it. So that was all because of DF Robot. And I just wanted to make sure that you guys check out DF Robot. Do I have a set up an Amazon account and then they can create Canadian links? Yeah, I think I read something about that, Carlo, and I can't remember honestly if I finished doing that or not. There's the same thing for like the UK and the UK and um, Australia and stuff too. I should do it. I mean, it's silly. I'm probably just, you know, there's people buying stuff and that's, uh, it's, that's okay. Uh, at making myself a thermostat with Tasmoda and it's going well, but it's set it's my relay pins to high when set off and low when on. Is there a way to invert this? Um, not, I, yeah, there is. I can't think of how it happens now. Is it switch mode? Do you have to change the switch mode? Can you guys help Timo? Yeah, it is a pain, Carlo. It is. Do you get if this and that to turn a switch on? How do you get if this and that to turn a switch on? Oh, that's a big question. It depends on your switch and there's a whole, there's a lot of varieties of ways to do it. Are you using Home Assistant and such? Or are you just trying to do it all through if this then that? Halloween thinking of motion activated screams. Did you see Andy? Did you see what uh, Rob did on his video? Didn't you do something like that, Rob? You've got some, um, I don't know if it was motion activated though. I'm excited to see what, um, uh, Tyson's Tyson's been building. Tyson's been, he's been AFK because he's been building, uh, some ridiculous haunted house in his garage. It's going to be pretty amazing video. Uh, con connect Google assistant with homes without the paid service. Yeah. At some point, Alejandro, I do, I do want to try and help and, um, show folks how to do that. Um, uh, it's not an easy process, so it's not gonna be something I'm going to be able to get to very soon but I want to try and figure it out. So hopefully it'll creep its way to the top of the priority list at some point. The instructions are there. If you just go to the home assistant documents, the instructions are there. So we probably ought to, we're getting close to two hours. We probably need to start wrapping up on Tasmoda page. Go to configuration, configure module then select relay. I that's it. Thank you, Sam. Yeah. Relay. I it, um, it'll change that for you. Thank you, Sam. There you go, Timo. There's your, there's your answer. All right. Hey kitties, you want to come upstairs and do the sign off? If in that sense, it's incoming SMS, but now need to turn a switch on. Hmm. Um, web hooks. I think you can do something where you, if, if you, if you text something to, if this, then that you can use a web hook maybe to activate something in home assistant. Not exactly sure. Have I used snips? I haven't heard about it though. Oh boy. There's screaming monkeys coming up the stairs right now. Hello. <laughs> okay. Come on over here, buddy. You can get down on one knee or something. Don't you can't sit on my lap. You're too big. There we go. Okay. So this is, we're getting ready to do the sign off. Jackson's even here. Big Jackson, get your head down there so people can see your head. Oh, we can do this. Let's try and do, I don't think I can see it anymore, but get, you guys going to have to kneel down or something. You're too, you're too tall. All you big monkeys. All right. So we're gathering the monkeys together for the sign off. Oh, Gracie's still getting dressed. All right. Look at this. Let's see. Can we squeeze one more? Right here. Gracie, right here. Gracie, what just happened? I don't know. Uh-oh. We need Zoe. Gracie, what happened? So, Mark, I apologize for this one. We didn't do the timestamps nearly as often as we should have, and it's going to be a long one to have to go back and watch. But I appreciate it. Explanation for web hooks before you go. Uh, I don't know much else about it. I'm sorry. That's all I can tell you. Uh, it, it's it's a way that you can take stuff from if this then that, and put it into Home Assistant. Search in the documents. Search the Home Assistant documents for web hooks. There'll be there'll be something in there. Come on. Where's Zoe? We almost had everybody. We almost had everybody. Zoe's in the shower. Okay, Zoe's in the shower. Okay, come here, baby. Come here, Gracie. These kids. Just getting, just getting out of the shower. Okay. Is that everybody in there? Okay. As always, thanks for watching. Always, I always wait. Okay, guys. Thanks again. Good hanging out. Appreciate y'all being here. Here we go. Do it. As always, thanks for Do it with some animo. Adios. 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 I didn't mean scream. Sorry about that. Sorry about that. Hopefully the condenser might condense that a little bit. Okay. Have a good one, everybody. We'll see you soon. We'll get another video out here pretty quick. I think so. He's Appreciate good. it. Have a good night. I think so. You guys can keep the uh, keep the chat going in the live stream Discord chat if you want. I think the YouTube chat stays live for a few minutes also. So have a good day, guys. Bye-bye.